other vessels, you what you do is you carry cargo, so you're just a truck driver. On a Greenpeace ship, usually you have a different uh, goal. Ship becomes an action tool to save the planet. I've been with Greenpeace full time since 2000, captain since 2004, so six years. Uh, I've been from uh, b being a volunteer on the Rainbow Water to be a captain in, in one of the you know most uh, difficult campaigns with the nuclear campaign where Greenpeace actually was born. Greenpeace has got um, three ships, the famous iconic Rainbow Warrior, um, the Icebreaker, the Arctic Sunrise, and um, this uh, 72 meter long beast, the Esperanza. All three of the ships are like floating offices. When you consider that lots of the environmental problems that we face on this planet are uh, problems that occur at sea, these big floating offices give us the ability to actually tackle those environmental problems head on. Our priority on the Greenpeace ships um, is to stay connected all the time, to stay in communication all the time, wherever we are in the world. I mean, our purpose out here and my responsibility out here is to transmit whatever we witness, a uh, first-hand view of what's actually happening. Got five inflatables on board, three large ones and two smaller ones, which we call the Novies. So the larger boats, they're all jet boats at the moment, uh, as opposed to propeller boats, and that's pretty good as uh, there's less sort of external moving parts which can get damaged. An inflatable is, is basically a tool to put you somewhere, as is a ship. So we can either use an inflatable to take somebody from this ship to another ship, and then uh, using a ladder they can climb on board, you know, and then, or we can use an inflatable to put ourselves between a ship and a quayside to stop it coming alongside or we can use an inflatable to put ourselves between a harpoon and a whale in order to stop the whale being shot. Ultimately, the, the boat is just a tool for, for us to put our bodies uh, where we want them to be in order to take direct action. Since Greenpeace bought the ship, uh, the ship has completely been redesigned, uh, converted. There was uh, a new engine put in, a smaller engine. That's a diesel-electric system. So now we are sailing in the combination one main engine and one electromotor, which gives us uh, the required speed, but we save uh, probably 2,000 litres of fuel per day by having this uh, possibility. We use the heat, waste heat from that engine, bring that over into a circulating loop of uh, water, and from that loop we can uh, take the heat or the energy and put it, uh, for example, in the boiler to preheat the water for, uh, for showers or for central heating in the, in the ship. Uh, so basically uh, we have a very, very little uh, loss of energy. So every morning we get a wake up call right around 7.30 and uh, come in for breakfast. And as soon as everyone's finished eating breakfast around eight o'clock, uh, everyone has a certain duty that they're assigned to. So this morning I've got mess duty, which just basically means wiping down all the counters, mopping the floors, making sure that all the dishes are cleaned and put away. And other folks are doing some of the, doing the alleyways, cleaning up the lounge upstairs, cleaning up the bathrooms and the showers. Uh, so that's just part of the routine that we do every day, every morning uh, while we're here on this bronzer. We have different nationalities, maybe 15 or 16 nationalities on board. So to make happy everybody, that is a big challenge. And somebody say Babu is most important person on board, of course. So everybody have their own view. I try to do my best. As far as everybody is happy. Deckhands come from all over the world and uh, their passion why they're here for the first place is to uh, do something to uh, make a difference. These are international activists at the same time so not only they're working on board and uh, chipping and painting but uh, half of their passion is also doing activist work for Greenpeace as well so uh, yeah it's really great and honor working with them all the time and very uh, self-motivated and driven people as well so yeah, good bunch to work with. Yeah, I'm proud of them all. Yeah. yeah, this time we're using the Esperanza to go beyond oil, to call on the world 
to start thinking about how we get off our addiction to oil. And that means not only looking at the way, the dangers of deep water drilling and other un unconventional oils, but also it's about saying, let's support an alternative, let's support electric vehicles, um, electric vehicle charging points. We do have the technology that we need to get off oil. We just need the will, the political will to do that. Yeah, I mean, if we're talking about climate change, then we're talking about stopping cutting down our forests, stopping burning coal and stopping burning oil. Now Greenpeace have got very effective campaigns on forests and coal, but we need to get this oil thing lit. And if we can, then we can beat climate change. So that's what we're doing out here.